Hello everyone, welcome to my channel The Modeling Guy. Today we are diving into an essential concept in finite element methods, shape functions. So what are they? Why do they matter? We will explore linear, quadratic and even higher order shape functions, breaking them down in a simple and intuitive way. So let's get started. So what exactly are shape functions? They are mathematical tools we use to interpolate values inside a finite element using the values we already know at the element nodes. Let's say you know the displacements at the two ends of this 1D element, U1 and U2, but what about the displacement right in the middle? This is where shape functions come in. They help us estimate or interpolate that unknown value between the nodes. Pretty cool, right? Shape functions aren't just abstract math. They solve real world problems. For example, think about estimating temperature inside a spacecraft's heat shield, where you only have sensor data at few points, or calculating a stress and strain in a bridge as it carries heavy loads, or even in biomedical applications like predicting how an organ might deform during surgery or treatment. In all these cases, we use shape functions to interpolate values where we can't directly measure, making them a powerful tool in engineering and science. So when talking about shape functions, there are some a very important terms you will come across. First, the degree of the polynomial. This could be linear, quadratic, or even cubic and higher order. Higher degree means more accuracy, but remember it also means more complexity. Next, the interpolation method. And uh, one of the most common ones is the Lagrangian shape functions. It's widely used because of its simplicity and flexibility. Finally, the usage of these shape functions. You'll often see something called isoparametric shape functions when dealing with finite element analysis. This just means we use the same shape functions for both geometry and field variable interpolation. We will explain each of these in more detail, so stay tuned for the next part of the video. So let's start with the simplest case. Linear shape functions are al also called as first order shape functions. These functions interpolate values linearly between the nodes of an element. In other words, if you connect the nodal values with a straight line, that's your shape function. They're easy to understand, right? Quick to compute, and they also form the foundation for a more advanced interpolation methods. You can see in the plot here, one shape function starts at one node and decreases linearly while the other increases. Together, they describe the variation across the element. Now, let's move on to the quadratic shape functions, also known as second order shape functions. Unlike the linear ones, they have an extra node at the midpoint of the element. The additional node allows the shape functions to capture curvature, which is especially useful for modeling more complex behaviors. These basis functions or the basis functions are parabolic, not straight lines, as you can see in the plot here. They curve between the nodes, giving us a more accurate and complex representation when the solution isn't just a straight line. Next up, cubic shape functions. They're also known as third or higher order shape functions. They're especially useful in spectral finite element methods and problems that require very, very high accuracy. As the order increases, the shape functions start to show oscillatory behavior, like the ones you see here in the plot. Because of this complexity, they often need special quadrature techniques for accurate uh, integration. They offer powerful precision, but they also require more care when implementing. Now, let's talk about Lagrangian shape functions. These are a cool concept. These use Lagrangian polynomials for interpolation. That means the shape functions are constructed to pass exactly through all the nodal values. They are defined in terms of nodes and the interpolation is exact at these nodal points. Lagrangian shape functions can be linear, quadratic or even higher order depending on the number of nodes in your element. Each shape function has a very useful property that is it's equal to one at its node and zero at all other nodes. This is called the Kronecker delta property. Because of this, you can think of them like switches. Each shape function activates only at its node, making interpolation super, super intuitive. 
the plots below show you how these functions behave smooth continuous curves that pass through each node perfectly capturing the variation in between all right now this is a really cool tool uh, note the word tool that i used just now so isoparametric shape functions basically let you reuse the same shape functions for both the geometry of your element and the field you are solving. For example, if you are solving for a displacement, temperature or stress. So yep, same math, doing double duty. This is super common in real world FEM codes because it's both elegant and practical. Let's say you are modeling a curved boundary, like the edge of a circular object or even an anatomical shape in biomechanics. Isoparametric shape functions let you accurately capture the geometry and interpolate your field values using the exact same functions. So in short, it is one tool, two jobs. Super cool, right? It's a clean and powerful idea. It uses the same functions to describe what the object looks like and also what's happening inside it. Now let's break this down with a more simpler example. Imagine you are modeling a piece of rubber. Yeah, like that uh, squishy, stretchy kind. You want to figure out two things. What the rubber actually looks like. Is it straight, curved, wrinkled? And how it's moving like when it's stretching or squishing under some load. Now without these shape functions that I just described, you'd need two different methods. One to describe the shape and a whole another one to describe how it deforms. This is just extra work, it's messy and makes coding and solving more complex. Basically you are juggling two systems when one unified approach would be way easier and cooler. And that's why isoparametric shape functions are a game changer. And that's a wrap for today guys. Thank you so much for watching. I hope this helped you get a better feel for shape functions and FEM. If you found this useful, please like and share it with a friend and don't for forget to subscribe so you don't miss what's coming next. Got questions or want more topics like this? Just drop a comment. I'd love to hear from you. See you in the next video.